Hello and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I am Dr. Abstract and in this video we're going to take a look at how to make this stuff going on in the background here. That's called noise. So we're going to work with noise. Shall we see an example of that? If we go into the gen art, which also has the noise feature there, we come on down and here's the tool right here that created that noise. You can play with it with the dials here and the colors. Uh, we're going to go into the noise example here that uh, looks like this. And noise, uh, basically what's happening is noise is an equation. <clears throat> and we can give that equation values. And if we change the values, then we can change what the, what the output will look like. So one of these, one of the values, <coughs> excuse me, will change where in the equation we are. So as we change that value, the equation will move like this. Uh, really, what we're doing is just moving along the equation. So that's one. The other will say how zoomed in to the equation we are. And so if we change how zoomed in we are, we can uh, change things. Let's go to the scarf and see. So that's the curve, the size, the speed, the bumps, the size. So if we adjust the size, there we're quite zoomed in and we don't see many bumps. If we, uh, oh no, sorry. That was the, that, that is just the amplitude that we're looking at there. It's the bumps that I was talking about. So here, if we, if we zoom out, we get more bumps. So there's like a lot of bumps and it starts looking more like noise, doesn't it? But if we zoom in, then it gets smoother and smoother. We should increase that size so we can tell. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, so now you see how smooth that is? It's because we're zoomed in on the equation. And here, we're zooming out and we're seeing more noise. What does this one do? This is uh, the type of curve that we're drawing there, so that doesn't really have anything to do with the noise. Okay, here is blobs. Now the neat thing about it is noise can also be, we can add more dimensions. So here we are looking at, in a sense, what we were looking at before, but from the top. And what we're, when we move, uh, imagine a sort of a bumpy plane like mountains. And what we're doing is taking a cross section across those mountains. And to get this motion, we're just moving that cross section up and down in the mountains. And it then joins these things and looks like blobs. Isn't that cool? Now, conventionally noise, I'll bring that up. Conventionally noise is considered to be something like this. You see, if you, if you just, this is zooming out. So now we're, um, we're seeing more of those bumps. If we keep on zooming, we'll just get little specks and those little specks look like noise, static. But if we zoom in on those little specks, we see that they're not actually static, that they're, they're joined, they're smooth. And it creates this um, neat, uh, neat pattern. Isn't that amazing? All right, so let's go work with some noise, shall we? We need to go grab a template, close that down, scroll on up here and back to Zim. And we'll grab some code. We'll copy the minimal template today. Copy. And reduce this down. Pop into Atom. And paste. <laughs> there we go. And we will call this hmm, lesson 08-6, I think we're on. Yeah, lesson 6. Well, not lesson 6. Lesson 8, video 6. All right, in here, put your code here. Well, um, the, the examples that we were seeing, we were drawing and connecting the noise with drawing. Uh, what we're going to do instead here is make a tile, and uh, we'll make a tile of rectangles, and we'll, move, we'll change the scale of those rectangles based on the noise equation. Sound good? And then we're going to control that using a motion controller and we'll change, we'll update the noise inside of a ticker. So both the ticker and motion controller are part of the Zim controls. Noise is actually uh, part of the code, the code module in Zim. It's called code, which gives us help with code, including a noise class that we can work with. All right, 
So const tiles is equal to a new tile. Yeah, I suppose we'll call it singular tile is equal to a new tile. And in here we'll tile a new rectangle like that. We'll make it say 12 wide and 100 high. We're going to be adjusting the scales of these things so it doesn't matter too, too much uh, what we put here. And we'll also make it white. Because we're making it white, why don't we work on a dark color here too. Dark. Okay, so that's um, the rectangle. We'll center reg it, dot center reg, because it's important when we scale it, we're going to scale it from the center of it. We could scale it from the bottom of it by making the registration point be 100 high. That would just see reg, round bracket 0, comma 100, and then things would come up from the bottom, like sound frequencies often come up from the bottom. Um, okay, so that we're centering. We say, hey, how many do we want? Um, whatever, 60. We'll make it only one, one uh, row, though. So that was 60 columns, one row, with a spacing of something like three. <laughs> and we can dot center this on the stage, like so, and see what we have when we open in browser. There we go. Now what we're going to do is apply the noise equation across these rectangles and see what we get. So to do that, we bring in the noise. Const noise is equal to a new noise, like that. Now noise has a really neat parameter there that will collect a seed. So if we just say new, new, new noise, and that's it, each time we run this, we're going to get a different seed randomly and therefore we'll see different noise. But if we pass in the same number there, when we run it, we will see the same noise. And that's fascinating, that concept. That allows us to make a 3D terrain, like say the, the user or the, the maker in a game says, oh yeah, I like that mountain, I see that mountain. Next time I come back, I wanna see the same mountain. Well, they can, we just pass the same number in here. All we need to do is store a single number and the next time they come back, they'll see their mountain with a single number. It's amazing. Okay, so that's the C. But for now, we'll keep it uh, randomizing as we go. And the next thing we want is to apply this, uh, the noise equation to each tile. So that would be looping through the tile, tile.loop. Or if you're using raw JavaScript, then you would, you would loop through that container with a for loop, for instance, and use a get child at to get each child in the container. But Zimloop does it for us and gives us, and you know, let's do an arrow function here, arrow function. We can collect each rect, so that's what we're tiling through the tile, and we get a rectangle each time. That's our own name for it. And we can also get an index number, which is an important thing to have, because uh, that's what's going to tell us where in the noise equation we want to pull our data from is it's going to change based on i. All right, so uh, we would then set the scale of the rect, rect.ska, to be one in the one in the x. So we're not changing the width scale. We're only going to change the height scale. And that will be based on the noise equation, noise dot simplex noise. So there's a couple different types of noise or famous ones. Uh, one is Perlin noise and the other is simplex noise. And uh, simplex is open source so we've incorporated that in, in Zim, simplex. And we're going to get a 2D noise equation. This gets a value based on two numbers and in here is where you place those two numbers. Uh, one number is just where it is in the equation, and one number is how zoomed in we are. So uh, both of those will move the equation or change the equation. It doesn't really matter right now what we put here. We'll put 5. And then here we'll, we'll put a small amount, like 0 0.01. Um, well, how about just 0.1 times i. So this is what we're changing times our i. So each time this value is going to change 0.1 basically. Okay, and did we complete that? Yep, there we go. All right, let's have a look then. 
And we added that to the stage. I think everything's good. Let's have a look. We refresh here. Now, the result of that is a number between, so the result of um, this is a number between negative 1 and 1. So a little bit different than a number between 0 and 1, and therefore we're getting that crossover. We can also amplify that times 5. So we're going to take whatever number we get, multiply it by 5 so that we can, oh, desktop reveal, so we can see that better. There we are. Okay, so that's that. If we refresh, we're getting different noise patterns. Now, we're sort of mediumly zoomed in on this, I would call it. If we zoom in more, then we're going to get smoother lines. And the way we zoom in more is give a smaller number here. So if we go 0.1 times that, we're going to get um, a smoother line. And see, isn't it already looking beautiful? It's like, oh yeah, and all these are little rectangles. Can you believe that? Oh, look at them go. Isn't that gorgeous? And we refresh and we can get different sort of parts of curves from that. Neat, huh? So it's so cool. We just want to make these move so that we can see more of it and feel the whole thing, feel the whole equation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now let's just test out that seed number. Uh, usually you put a big random number in there if you want a random number. That's what it will give you, but we can put in a specific number like 1. And why don't we go the other route here. We'll make this even bigger. Why don't we just make it 1 times i, which is, well, which is going to be i. And when we refresh here, uh, we get that. So that is quite noisy. You see, we're going up and down. We're sort of representing. It's almost like this is a bar graph representing the average of you know these point zero 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 ones, etc. That's the average. And so what we're now seeing is the average. But if we refresh, I see the same thing. So I'm I'm refreshing and I see the same pattern. Whereas if we put uh, the number three in here. Okay, check this out. There's two bumps up, one bump down. I refresh, now there's not. But if I go back to one, like that, and refresh, two bumps up, one bump down. It's the same pattern that it was. So it's almost like you can save a pattern by having one number. <laughs> Neat, huh? Okay, so uh, let's see. Let's work on this a little bit. I don't know if you noticed that when we went 0 0.01, for instance, times i. Uh, should we save that? Yeah, okay, we can save that. This is the zoomed in version. Oh, desktop reveal! There we go. So that's what we're seeing, and I refresh, and that's what I see again. Now, what I want to try and do, though, is make it so that it doesn't cross and go negative. I don't mind that, but I wouldn't mind it if it, um, if it was always there instead of sometimes crossing over into nothing. And to do that, this is a number, let's see, this is a number between negative 1 and 1. So all we need to do is add 1 to it, and then it's a number between 0 and 2, and then we divide it by 2. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too complex. We grab that, and we say, hey, I want to add 1 to you, so that would be adding 1. So it, this is adding 1 to that, but then we're going to divide it by 2, which maybe doesn't matter when we multiply it by 5. <laughs> okay, so this gets us a number between 0 and 1, and then we're multiplying it by some value there of 5. Okay, and now we uh, always see, well, let's see, I can't quite tell what's going on. It looks like it's it's activating from uh, from here and always going negative. Why would that be? Didn't we add one to it? Why is this being pushed down? Oh, because we didn't center ridge. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we did all that stuff on the center ridge back there. So, oh yes, let's center ridge. And so do you see why that's being pushed down now? If If we have a, a registration point of here, when we scale it, it scales from the top. So we refresh here, now it's scaling from the middle. Well, why don't we randomize that so we can see a few different ones. Uh, I'll just take that right out, it will randomize it for us. We can also, uh, 
let's make that a 0.1 so we can see a bit more curve on that. We refresh here, and here's what we're getting. Cool, huh? So that's coming out from the center, and I, I kind of prefer it coming out from the center rather than um, one way or the other. And if we set the reg to be the bottom, it would then come up from the bottom. Okay. Great. Well, we did a little bit of equation work there, but hope I know it looks looks kind of gnarly, but it's uh, not that bad. The other thing you can do is you can um, cut this out and put it into its own little equation uh, area or little you know line, and then it doesn't it's not okay, big and long like that. Do you want to do that? So we can say something like uh, let val, the value that we're doing, equal to, and we'll just um, copy out the noise simplex part right here, x, put it there, and then we can say val times 5. Oh, we need that one round bracket, but we don't want that one, which means I think this one comes up with a round bracket short. Yeah, we need a round bracket there. Let's see. So we're taking the noise. We're uh, we're going to have to deal with um, these things in here. This these are the things that we're dynamically wanting to change. This number and that num uh, that number i. Um, well, maybe i will always stay in there. I guess yeah, I guess it does. But we can adjust this number times i. So that number and this number are the two numbers that we're wanting to adjust. So we could bring these up, and it might be let, uh, we'll call it x is equal to uh, 5, x, 5 there, and let y is equal to point, uh, zero 0.01. We'll go back to the point zero 0.01, like so. And then we have x here and y here. y is what's being multiplied to get each, um, each rectangle basically and the height for each rectangle and then this is just making it all positive we're passing it in we're amplifying it so this is this will just uh, make it bigger so if we say by 10 it will it will make everything fatter by 10. One thing we could do as well is have a starting um, value because right now this valve could be zero could go down to zero this might this might be zero and if we want it to be like a tube and always a little bit bigger, we can say, hey, at least start with a scale of 1, or at least start with a scale of 0.5. So at least there's something there in the scale of the rectangle. And then we're increasing it. So let's do that too. And we get this. So we're zoomed in more at the moment, but we're getting at least a certain scale. And then the noise is all being applied to the, the top and the bottom there. So how do we know how to do that? Like uh, that, that goes slightly back to mathematics. It's more like playing with numbers a little bit. Um, you know, I've been experimenting with this type of stuff for years. And you just get used to adjusting numbers like that. The math here really, aside from the noise itself, but the math here isn't really beyond grade four math, you know, where we're just adding and dividing. Um, so don't be scared of it. We don't have to do it a lot. And it's not like that's why we do all this is so that we can do math. I mean, that's what it is for some people. <laughs> but we're just trying to manipulate our, our image or what we're seeing so that we get what we like, the visual art of it, you know, the creative coding here. So we've broken it up into little parts that might help us later because then we can use, we could use a dial to change this number. We could use a slider to change that number. But what we're going to do is use a motion controller to change these numbers. So let's, uh, let's do that. Now, let me see. We sometimes want to uh, explore the bounds of these numbers to see how much we should change them. So let's see what um, changing this to 100 does. I don't think it's going to do anything. I may be wrong. It, it doesn't appear to really do anything. All that's doing is saying, where am I in 
along my equation. So this is where it is, is if it's at 100, if we put 101, it would be, this whole thing would be shifted over to the left a little bit. 102 shifted over to the left. If we put 95, shifted to the right. So it's, it's like, imagine this bumpy equation. It's where along the equation are, we are. So this, if, if we're changing this, this will change how fast we move along the equation. So if we go from 0 to 100, as we go from the left of the screen to the right of the screen, we're going to go at a certain speed. If we go to 0 to 1,000, as we go from the left to the right, then we're going to move much faster. It'll go and move really fast. If we go zero to fifty, we're only going to move. We're going to move slower, and we're only going to see. We're going to see less of uh, you know less of the equation. All right. This one is how much we're zoomed in. So we've seen that we we kind of like it at point one. That's that's not too bad. So if we come here, this is zoomed out, I guess. Right. So I like the looks of that. That's you know, that's quite nice. What about one? If it's one, do I still like it? Refresh. You know, not really. Now, now it looks more like noise. I don't mind people exploring this, but it looks too much like noise for me. So we'll go from one, and what do we think about the point zero one? There's point zero one. We refresh here. Well, that's okay. Probably if I were moving along the equation, I wouldn't mind seeing what it looks like really nice and smooth like that. So why don't we go from point zero 01 to 1? And in this one, we're, it almost doesn't matter. We could just, uh, well, I don't know. We'll, we'll try it out. We could go from 1 to uh, 50, and let's see what that looks like. So we want this number to go from 1 to 50. And we want this number to go from, well, let's put it here, 0 0.01 to 1. Okay, so now that we have the bounds of that, we just have to make sure that whatever we're using, the dial or the slider, goes between those numbers. With a dial and slider, it's quite easy. We would pass in a min of 1 and a max of 50, and that would work no problem. Uh -huh. With motion, we're going to have to do a proportion. Now, there is a JavaScript map, it's called, which will map one system to another system, in a sense. That's what we're doing. Uh, in Zim, we have um, a proportion and a proportion damp, so we can damp those numbers. But the motion controller already will include damping. If we if we want it to, so we don't have to go back to the basics of using a, a proportion damp, although we could. Uh, so let's build the motion controller. It would look like var motion controller is equal to a new motion controller, and in here we're going to specify some things. Now, if we want to see what we're actually controlling, we're welcome to add something so that we can see where we are. In the end, I think we can just use our mouse and we don't have to see where a ball is, for instance, but it sometimes helps um, as we're learning here to see that. Oh, that's a const. And up here, const circle equals a new circle. I think so. We could, uh, that's going to be a black circle, so let's call it 30, and we will make it uh, white. Well, the other ones are white, why don't we make it pink? There we go, and we'll dot center that for now on the stage. And then our motion controller, the object, or the target, I think it is, target is the circle, and we will do that on the type of quote, mouse move, like so. So whenever we move the mouse, it's going to end up moving the circle. And we test it out and see if that works. Something broken. Ah, semicolon. <laughs> there we go. And refresh. So now we get the, the circle heading to the mouse. And we're going to use the x and y of the circle 
to change the values. Uh, by the way, why don't we say now that we're moving something, we'll call this a darker, like so. And now we can see where our actual bounds of the stage are. All right, so we're going to use the x and y of that to, to try it. Uh, so that's down in here. Oop. We would uh, we can zog the circle dot x and why don't we math dot round that to have a better view of it round the circles dot x and let's see what's going on with that and imagine how we can make it go from one to fifty. F11, or F12, sorry. And uh, that doesn't look like it's moving. What happened to it? Oh, do we have a ticker yet? No, sorry about that. Um, yeah, that, that we just put that in a loop. This whole thing should be inside of a ticker, so it's constantly doing this. All right, that was just one setting. We need to be inside of a ticker. Ah, ticker dot add, and we'll call this. Oh, we'll call an arrow function there. Arrow function. So we put the loop inside there. X. Now we're inside the loop, and here's where we would test our circle. Darn, I erased that, didn't I? Circle, or we're zogging. Zog. Circle dot x, and we want a math dot round on that. So two more circles and a math dot round. Otherwise, it's hard to read what we what our x is. OK, so we've put that now inside of the ticker where we're going to see it change as it goes. So there we are. When it's over on the right, it's 10, 24. When it's up at the when it's at the left, it's it's zero roughly. It looks like our motion control. Oh, there we go, zero. Okay, so we're getting a number between zero and the stage width. So um, what we really want is uh, we can convert that to a number between zero and one. This is usually the easiest way to think about it. We will zog and we'll keep the same thing. We won't bother rounding it though, will we? Uh, yeah, I guess we'll need to. Uh, the circle dot x divided by stage width. Now, this is what Zim proportion helps you with and proportion damp helps you with. But in this simple case where we're going from zero to a number, usually we can do the calculation just in our heads like this. So if we divide that number by the stage width, that will give us a number between zero and one. That gives us the percentage or the proportion. And then we multiply that by uh, this number right here, our max. But we're start wanting to start at one, so it would be something like this. This will be close enough. One plus, it's not exactly right, but one plus that proportion times, it's really times a difference, times 49, but whatever, 50 is fine. Okay, so the equation would really be our starting point, and, and like I said, this is where proportion tent, get, or proportion gives us that exact that exact thing. We want we want between zero and the stage width to be converted to between one and fifty, and so you know what? Maybe we should just do a proportion uh, because this isn't quite right. It ends up being times round bracket 50 minus 1, because uh, that's the difference between uh, these things, <laughs> right? And you're looking at this and going, oh, uh, uh. Uh, we get away with it. The number doesn't really matter all that much. We said 50. If it's 51, we're not going to notice. And same with down here. But um, if you want to see what a proportion looks like, it is like this. Um, new, uh, we'll store it in a variable or a const, const proportion x is equal to a new proportion. And in here you put the, um, the starting values, which is zero comma stage width. And then you put where you want to go to, which is one comma 50. <laughs> 
Okay, does that sound pretty good? And then inside here, you you don't have any of this stuff in here. I'll copy it just in case, copy and paste. You don't have any of that stuff in there. We would just say um, PX, and then it would, um, uh, oh, PX dot convert. So we use a convert on that, and we convert the um, circle dot X. There we go. So we're going to round that so we can see the number a bit better. PX dot convert the circles X. So this is what we're basing this on. This is how we want to set up the proportion. So the circles X is going to be between these two numbers somewhere. And we're going to get a number that's between 1 and 50 now, once we've converted it. All right, let's try right. I can't remember. It might actually round it for you. So if I go way over to the left, I'm getting a number 1. Do you see that? It's the number 1, not the number 0. If I go over to the right, I'm getting the number 50. So th that is kind of like a no calculation. It's just like, oh, I didn't even have to think about how to do that inside of there. But that's how to do that inside of there. That would work too. Now let's just see if it, if the, if it does actually convert for us to a... a Maybe it doesn't. There might be a parameter that lets us. Yeah. See, this is what I mean. If we don't round it, then we're looking at numbers like this, and it's just sort of like, oh, what exactly are we seeing here? <laughs> However, we don't want to round the answer. So what are we wanting to do with this? Well, that's what we want to set x equal to. We said we want it to be between 1 and 50. So we would take this right here, copy that, place it in there we would uh, do something similar for the 0 to 1. Okay, so that would be here, copy, paste. We would get the proportion in the Y. And what do we want to do for Y? We want to go between 0 and the stage height, and we want it to go between 0 0.01 and 1. 0 0.01 and 1. There's more parameters here, too, that relate to inverting the, inverting the proportion, things like that, and probably also rounding it. I bet you that there's one in here that says make it a whole number. And then we would convert that number right here. And that is based on the Y and also the Y here. So based on the circle's Y, we're going to set a number here. This is all being passed into the... Um, the noise equation, and then we're using that noise equation to scale the rectangle that is at the I. All right, so let's try her out and see what happens. We refresh here. Get rid of this. Okay, so as I move left and right, it's changing. Now, how do I get that to be smoother? I go down like this, and it not all that smooth, is it? If I go, oh, okay, so it's when I'm up, it's smooth. Nice, huh? When I'm down, it's jiggly. So that's a lot of jiggly. I think that's, you know, too much jiggly in there, isn't it? We, we only need maybe that much jiggly. And I like the smooth, though. How is that for smooth? And how's our speed? As I go across, is that moving too quickly? To me, it's moving too quickly, isn't it? So let's make it move slower. We said we don't need between 1 and 50. Maybe it's only between 1 and 20. And we don't want to go right up to 1. We want to go, oh, to 0.1 maybe. All right, so there we go. We've just adjusted those two numbers there, and we should see a change in the effect. So now as we move, uh, not too bad. And if we go down to here, how much jiggly? Uh, we don't get the, the full jiggly. Up here, it's smooth. Down here, it is, yeah, not jiggly enough. So what, uh, 0.5 maybe? And how are we for smooth, uh, the speed? Did we like it? If we go to 10, we would see that be a little bit shorter. Okay, so there we are getting jigglies. Great. And if we come up, we get smooth. Great. And there's the speed in which we're moving through it. I like that. 
I think that's too much jiggly though too quickly. Like I, I can't really tell the difference of what's going on there. Uh, so which one was that? That was here, maybe 0.3. There, we've tuned it. And I don't even really want to see the circle. So we can go uh, this. If we do, we, we just have to watch it. Um, the movie or the motion controller will still have a target, but it will no longer be the circle. So where we were using circle here, here and here, it should be the, the motion controllers dot target like that. And that gives us that gives us the um, what happens is if you don't supply a target, the motion controller just does an invisible container. So look at that. Yes. I love it. Isn't that neat? And we come on down and it gets tighter. And we can go up and down. Yeah, that's not too bad. You can still see a bit of pattern in there. And we go up and it gets smooth. Let's uh, zoom in on that, or F12, or F11, that is, and try her out here. Can you believe we did that with, um, with just that code? <laughs> yeah, we did that with um, some uh, creative coding and JavaScript and some noise and Zim. All right, that was great. And when we come back, we'll see uh, a few more vids. We've only got a couple vids left. I think we're going up to 30. So a couple vids left and doing creative coding uh, with uh, the various controls that we have available for us. If you're still here, come on in and join us at zimjs.com slash slack. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Also, of course, take a look at the various other examples in Zim. There's a whole bunch. There's a whole bunch of working with noise and the other types of controls on CodePen and also, yeah, on the Zim examples site. All right. All the best. Ciao.